Hey, this is Dave from Retire Time Productions. And as a cheap flight controller with GPS navigation, the Omnibus 4 and this GPS have become quite popular. And I just want to do a quickie video here on how to wire up the GPS to fit the flight controller and then configure it with iNav Clean Flight so that the GPS works. So let's get started. Welcome to Retired Time Productions. So both of these came from Banggood, the Omnibus F4 V2 Pro flight controller board and the Neo M8N GPS with Pixhawk connectors. I didn't notice this but the Omnibus F4 from Banggood that I ordered did not come with any wiring connectors or any pin headers. So it's a good idea to order those separately when you order your board. Since I didn't, I'm going to have to make up my own cable for serial port 6 to hook up the GPS. Basically, this is the board here, and I had an extra connector that I got out of my junk pile that does fit the Omnibus F4 right there. And I'm using some wires that I already got from another project with the connectors. I'm trying to match up the colors. Colors don't really matter, just got to get the wires to go to the right pins. So I've already soldered them on, and then I'm going to poke them back into the connector here and get them in the right order, hopefully, using this diagram. So here's the Omnibus, and this is the COM port or serial port 6 that it goes in right here. And you can see I've got to run the RX here at the top of the Omnibus to the TX on the GPS. And the TX on the Omnibus goes to the RX on the GPS. Then ground goes to ground. 5 volts goes to 5 volts. SCL goes to SCL and SDA goes to SDA. So that's it. Interesting thing to note, the shield is actually the ground on this GPS, but the black is actually the SDA signal, not the ground. So there's just uh, one ground coming out, and that's the shield. This braided stuff here, and then there's a little piece of foil shield over the whole thing, which I'm not using. But uh, I got the heat shrink on now, and now I'm going to put on the connector. So there you go. That's pretty much it. Those are the collars I've got and the connector I'm using. Now let's go test it out. Now to install the firmware on the Omnibus F4 Pro, you need to first download the iNav configurator, and that's on GitHub. I can put a link for that. And the other thing you might need is the driver, because sometimes the driver doesn't work, and that's the Impulse RC Driver Fixer EXE file, which I can also put a link for. So let's just go ahead and launch the iNav configurator. I haven't got it up yet, so I'll go ahead and launch it. That's right here. I've unzipped all the files, but you just run this one right here. Bring that up. Now, before you load the iNav firmware, the board will probably have some other firmware on it. Who knows what? But when you try to connect, the indication is you'll get the CLI come up, and that means that you definitely need to flash the firmware. Also, the lights on the controller will have a solid green light, but the blue light will be blinking very slowly instead of rapidly like it will after you load the correct firmware. Now just be careful when you plug in the USB cable because it can damage the port on the board, so you got to kind of hold it with your thumb when you plug it in. There's been reports of this connector breaking off. It's kind of necessary to be careful when you plug it in because if it breaks off, it it really can't be fixed. Okay, so we don't want to connect because we're going to load the firmware. So we'll just go to here, Firmware Flasher. Now the only option we need to select on is this one right here, No Boot Sequence. Then you choose your board, and I'm going to go for this example. I'm going to use Omnibus F4 Pro. I could also use the one with the lead strip. I think I'll go with the lead strip one. Then we go down here and select the firmware, which is this one right here. And then just load the firmware online. And once you do that, this other window pops up. And there's a whole bunch of stuff you can read here. But the bottom line is we're going to go ahead 
and click Flash Firmware. But before we do, we have to press the little button on the Omnibus board. There's a tiny button. You can press it in either using your fingernail or you can use a pen to hold it in. Something to press in the button. Once you press in the button, plug the USB cable in to your computer. Wait for the driver to install, then you can let go of the button. You'll just hear the driver doo doot sound. Then you can let go of the button. And then you can hit flash firmware. If it doesn't work, just make sure that you have installed that driver, because that might be the problem. And also the configuration at the top. If you have full chip erase on, it won't flash sometimes. So make sure that's off. Then hit flash firmware. And the first thing it does is erase. And then it starts loading the firmware right here. But it has still time to verify. Okay, now it's success. So the green light is still on solid, but the blue light is flashing much more rapidly than it did before the firmware was flashed. I can now connect. And the first thing you'll notice is the PWM output is disabled. Motors and servos will not work. Use the configuration tab to enable. So let's do that first. Go to the configuration tab and just enable the motor and servo output just so we don't forget. And then go ahead and save and reboot. Okay, so at least we got that part done. Now we can go ahead and reconnect. It does that automatically, I think. And now we're back and I can move the board around and see that it's working. Okay, that's that step. Okay, so let's go ahead and disconnect. Then we'll go ahead and unplug the USB cable. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug the GPS unit into serial port 6. Now let's go ahead and plug the USB cable back into our USB port. And we'll go ahead and set up for the GPS. So the first thing we need to do is connect. And then we'll go to the Ports tab and enable the GPS here. So we'll go to GPS. The baud rate should be default. That should be fine. Save and reboot. All right. Now let's go back to the Configuration tab because you can still see that the magnetometer and the GPS lights are not on yet up top here. That's because we've got to go in and do a few more things. So let's turn on our GPS here on the configuration tab and choose U blocks right there. Then go up to the magnetometer and I'm going to you can choose auto I think, but I'm just going to go ahead and choose this one which I believe is the right one for the PixHawk uh, type GPS that I have. And I'm going to go ahead and save and reboot. Now sometimes it won't reconnect after enabling all that stuff. And I think it's because the virtual COM port changes or something when you add these devices. So what I'm going to do is stop the connection right there go in here and pick COM port 5 and then reconnect again. There it is. So we have success and if we go to the GPS tab right here we can see that the messages are counting so the GPS appears to be working. It's getting messages back and forth and it's trying to get a fix right now. Now if you go back to setup, you can now calibrate the magnetometer. And you do that by moving it around at least 360 degrees in all axes for 30 seconds. Let's try that. So I'll hit calibration. And now this is the magnetometer I'm moving around, not the board. But of course the board is going to be moving a little bit too when I do this. I'm just dragging it around by the end of the GPS cable. But mainly I'm just trying to move the GPS all around for 30 seconds and try to get all the axes. 
All right, there it is, it's done. And just pop back to calibrate magnetometer. So that's it, we've got everything configured, the GPS is working, and we can go on and do some other things. Uh, I can probably set it up for a quadcopter or a plane. I may do that in other videos, but this video here was just to get the, the GPS and compass working. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.